Hello everyone, my name is Jose Garcia, and in this video, I want to show you guys how to best effectively use the planar mill. The planar mill, in my experience, is one of the most misunderstood uh, commands when it comes to NX cam planar milling. So, the thing you need to understand about planar milling is that the command itself is a dumb command and I use the word dumb in quotes the other commands like floor and wall face milling uh, those all take into consideration the in-process workpiece or the IPW whereas the planar mill does not you define the planar mill manually so everything that you specify is manual all right, so that includes the blanks, the floor, and the part boundaries themselves. Because as far as the planar mill is concerned, it does not know anything about your uh, piece that you're machining here. Okay, so I just set everything up very quickly. Uh, I believe I just need to specify uh, my workpiece. Uh, so let me double check that. It looks like the workpiece actually is already done as well. Uh, of course, my MCS, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but this is ultimately what I have right here. Uh, and, you know, uh, let's assume that uh, I'm going to face this really quickly. So actually, you know what, let's just do that so you can see the, uh, the power of the planar mill here. So I'll just go ahead and hit create operation. Uh, we'll do a mill planar floor facing without wall. Uh, we'll set our correct parents here like so. So I'm going to fly through this very quickly. Uh, because uh, there's an important concept uh, to keep in mind when you're doing the planar milling here and that is you know where did you last leave off your um, your part boundary right so that's probably uh, you know one of the most confusing parts in this entire piece here uh, so let me go ahead and do this very quickly here let me put this as my uh, Cut area floor there, use final floor stock, same as part. No, I think I'm okay with that. And of course, I'll just go ahead and set this to the blank outline just in case. All right. Uh, so there we go. We have our first initial operation. Now, the IPW at this point should look something like this, right? So if I show the IPW here, you can see that the top of that face has been completely removed. All right. And so now what I want to do is I want to cut out uh, this little portion here up to this floor. I do not want to cut out this giant hole here. I'm going to reserve that for the hole milling operation. So what I need to do is I need to come up here into create operation. And the command that I'm going to use is the planar mill. Okay, The planar mill can do pretty much everything that all of these other ones can do okay maybe not planar profile but everything else it can do all right the thing about it though is you have to set it up manually you have to define everything from scratch okay and that's the scary part uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and choose our planar mill here. Our program is going to be the same thing. The tool, though, I might change that to 316s here. Uh, and, you know, everything else, we'll just leave this on rough. And then go ahead and hit OK on that as well. Uh, actually, I think I messed up my parent here. Nope, that's perfect. OK, good. So, first step, we need to specify a part boundary. So, what do you want to leave behind when it's done cutting? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select the part boundary here. Okay. Uh, and for my part boundary, I'm going to go ahead and choose the bottom of the chamfer edge. And I know what you're thinking. Why are you not picking the top of the chamfer edge? Because if we pick the top of the chamfer edge, it's going to cut all the way to this edge right here. And essentially, we're going to have that chamfer distance removed as a material and the part would be completely incorrect right so the tool is looking for an edge to kiss right so you have to choose the bottom chamfer edge here all right so just make sure that this guy here is set to tangent curves we're going to go ahead and select this guy like so 
right? So see, the tool is not going to pass this part boundary, right? So this is what needs to be left behind after you are done cutting, okay? If you chose the top edge, imagine extruding that top edge imaginary wise, right? Obviously, your uh, tool path would then cross over the chamfer and it would make your parts basically scrap, okay? So now that we've selected the part boundary, okay, we're going to go ahead and choose a side. So where is the tool going to cut? Is it going to cut on the inside or is it going to cut on the outside? Well, this is a closed loop and I want to cut the inside portion of this piece, right? So I'm going to go ahead and choose tool side inside okay and this is the part that confuses people the most okay if that's the case in its current ipw state right where is the part boundary located okay it's actually not located here right we haven't cut anything all we did was faced off the top but we haven't cut anything to signify this depth so the plane actually has to move to this face right here. This is the last face that we left off on, right? This is where IPW currently is. So if we pick this face right here like that, you can see that it essentially projects your piece or your curves up to the plane, okay? And so the depths per cut is going to be inferred from this plane. If you did not set the plane correctly, your depth of cut would start from the bottom chamfer edge and it could be wrong, okay? So, let's continue. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay here. Now, it knows the part boundaries, it knows how high that part boundary is, right? Uh, all it needs now is a floor. So the floor is going to be uh, down to this face right here. All right. So I need to change my little scope filter up here to entire assembly and select this guy right here. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit okay, just like that. And as you can see, we have something that looks like this. All right. Now I'm going to change this depth of cut, right? Just so you can see. If I come down here to the path settings, the depth per cut, you know, let's say that's going to be 70 thou, like so. And as you can see, our nice, beautiful tool path is contained inside, okay? And so it is achieving what we expect it to, all right? Now, I just want to confirm that the floors are going to be finished, but the walls are not. I can go over into the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm confusing this with another command. Uh, the floor, if you wanted to leave behind stock, you would obviously offset the plane a little bit. Uh, but I can go ahead and hit OK on this, uh, and that looks pretty nice. Now, of course, if I say show 3D IPW, you can see that sure enough, it's leaving behind that stock, and the depth is correct. See that? If I chose the bottom chamfer edge, right? The tool path would be probably a little bit deeper and that could possibly cause your tool to break. All right. Now, the thing about the planar mill, as I pointed out to you earlier, is that it is a dumb command. So if I change the floor facing, let's say that I get rid of this. Let's say I don't need this anymore for whatever reason. I can move this out of the way like so. But do you notice how the planar mill doesn't care? It, quite frankly, thinks that that's still there, right? So the planar mill does not rely on the previous IPW because it doesn't work that way. You defined everything from scratch. So if you're not careful and you change something in the previous state, the IPW, you might not remember that you did it and then the planar mill will cause your whole day to be ruined. So if I look over here, you can see the tool path is still exactly the same. But remember, we still have this material on top. I took the face mill away. So now you're taking an extremely deep depth of cut here, right? So let me show you what that looks like, right? I'm going to go ahead and kind of look at it from the side here, okay? 
you can see that very clearly this this cut right here from here to the top of that stock that's a, a very aggressive cut okay uh, so what would you need to do to fix this well you would need at this point so let's say that you want to cut out this pocket with the stock in one piece right you didn't face mill it what you would have to do is you would have to change your part boundary plane right the part boundary is no longer here anymore. It's actually going to be on the top of the stock, right? So if I pick the top of the stock like this, okay, you can see that it projected that curve to the top of the stock. I can hit OK, all right? And you can see that now it gave me additional tool paths, right? So this would be the correct way to fix the planar mill if previous operations are altered, okay? So hopefully this gives you a good idea on how the planar mill works. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about how you use the planar mill for outside cuts, okay? So this one is specifically geared for inside cuts. In the next video, I'll show you how to do outside cuts. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.